This video is part of the Commercial Building Electrical Design Series, uh, and we're talking about lighting design, and we're continuing our discussion on lighting terms and definitions. Keeping track of where we are uh, in the series, again, we're starting out lighting design, continuing to talk about terms and definitions. So as we continue our introduction to lighting design, we now want to start to turn our focus to terms and concepts that will be used in making uh, lighting calculations. We have already defined the concept of illuminance in terms of foot candles, which we shall use later to calculate the number of fixtures required in a space. We will also need to have knowledge of the size of the space in terms of the length and width of the space, along with the ceiling height and the height of the lighting fi fixtures, if, that, if the height of the fixtures is different. So defining some terms here, uh, first is lamp. So the term is used to refer to the complete light source package, including the inner part as well as uh, the outer bulb or tube. This term is also commonly used to refer to the type of small fixture such as a table lamp. Uh, luminaire, this is uh, a complete lighting unit consisting of a lamp or lamps, ballast or ballasts, as required together with the parts designed to distribute the light, position and protect the lamps and connect them to the power supply. So this is the more commonly recent recognized term for uh, you know, what we are designing with or are using to illuminate an area. You know, used to you would say light fixtures or lights, but uh, the correct term is luminaire. So we need to talk about reflectance. So the reflectance of a surface of a material is its effectiveness in reflecting radiant energy. It is in the fraction of incident electromagnetic power that is reflected at an interface. So the reflectance spectrum or spectral reflectance curve is the plot of the reflectance as a function of wavelength. wavelength. This is a function of the surface materials and colors, but in general, the following reflectances uh, reflectance values can be used for most cases. So if you don't know what the color exactly is in an area, uh, the default values of floors 20% because floors are usually fairly dark, uh, ceilings 80% because they're almost always white or very light color, and then walls 50% uh, usually uh, some type of color but it's usually a bright color. You, know, you rarely do dark colors on a wall. Just to look at some of a little more particulars, you know, if you needed that uh, on a design, uh, you know, looking at different colors, these are the corresponding reflectances that you might put in for these. Um, again, ideal ceiling 60 to 90, ideal walls 35 to 60, countertops 30 to 50. Like if you had a mirror, it's going to be 95, right? That thing's going to reflect like crazy. Whereas if you have something like uh, birch or maple, you know, woods, they're not going to reflect near as much. There's going to be a kind of a dark, give you a dark feeling there. You're going to need more light in there to overcome that a lack of reflectance. Luminaire intensity distribution. So these are curves that you can get from the manufacturers, and these basically just show how the light is going to be projected from the fixture. Uh, these can help assist, you know, when you're spacing fixtures to know how far apart to space them, or if you're actually trying to light something up like a wall wash, you know, what angles you need to uh, position the light fixture at. Again, you can obtain these from the, the lighting manufacturers usually. Coefficient of utilization. So in general, lighting, in general lighting calculations, the fraction of initial lamp lumens that reach the work plane is the way we define this term. So CU is a function of luminaire intensity distribution, uh, room surface reflectances, and room shape. So a lot of things can affect this, uh, this coefficient of utilization. Here are some of the things that go into that. Um, we don't want to get into the nitty gritty of how this is calculated because most of the manufacturers have this taken care of for you for, most, for the most part. But uh, things that affect it are you know, this HCC, which is the difference in the height of the ceiling to the where the fixture is, is located. Uh, the room cavity, which is, is the distance from the work plane to the light fixture, the floor cavity. Uh, you can see we have def def uh, variables defined for all these things and, and 
and uh, they're, they're used in calculating this coefficient of utilization. I thought this was a pretty interesting uh, graph showing how you know the coefficient of utilization can be affected. Uh, we have the same light fixture uh, used in all six cases. On the bottom they have a reflector which uh, helps to distribute the light toward the target, whereas up here we just have just the fixture itself uh, without the reflector uh, accompanying it. And you can see, I took a side view here, and you can see that the target is further and further away from the light fixture. You can kind of see this in this graph as well. And so from this, we can see that the coefficient of utilization goes down as the target moves away from the fixture. You can also see that the reflectors are helping to direct the light toward the target, so that's giving you a better coefficient of utilization. So it's 0.99 in this bottom left one here. You may not can read that. It goes all the way down to 0.47 when it's furthest away with no reflector. So just kind of a, give you a feel for, for how, what affects the coefficient of utilization. Uh, the ballast factor, which is abbreviated BF, is defined as the commercial ballast performance relative to a reference ballast. So this is typically based on the light source type and the ballast type utilized for the specific fixture. Uh, almost always this is available from the manufacturer, so it's nothing you have to calculate, but it's something you may have to ask for or look up in the uh, manufacturer's catalog. Lamp lumen depreciation, this is abbreviated LLD. So as a lamp ages and nears end of life, it produces less and less light on a predictable curve, the extent of which depending on the type of lamp. If group relamping is employed as a planned maintenance strategy, which usually is in large buildings, uh, then we take the LLD, LLD factor for the point of life in which these lamps are replaced in mass or altogether. Otherwise, uh, we use an average, which is at for most of the time we say 40% of life. So we have a table here that uh, you know, gives you kind of a, a feel for what uh, LLD uh, values are for, for different types of lamps. So fluorescence, usually in the, in the low 90s, uh, compact fluorescence, 0.85, mercury vapor, 0.79, metal halide, 0.83, so on. So you can see, depending on what lamp you use, uh, this will affect the, the lamp lumen depreciation. Probably more descriptive though is this curve that shows you know, lamp life uh, for different types of lamps over time. And this is, this is over burning hours. So we're going anywhere from 5,000 hours of use all the way up to 100,000 hours of use. Uh, there's no need to go past 100,000 because UL won't recognize anything rated higher than 100,000. After that, they just say 100,000 is the best we can do. Um, and the way they test these is kind of interesting. The um, UL, whenever a new lamp comes on the market, um, they'll send 100 of the lamp of the light bulbs to UL. UL line them up uh, in a row, turn them on, let the clock tick, and then. As lamps burn out, you know, they don't say anything until the 50th bulb burns out and then they stop the test there and say that's the lamp life of the lamp. So, but you can see here, even before the lamp burns out, these things depreciate uh, pretty significantly, some of them worse than others. So like these metal halides, I mean, it's almost like getting a car, a brand new car, right? As soon as you drive it off the lot, the thing depreciates like crazy. So after 5,000 hours, you can see you're only getting 70% of the light that you got when you originally turned it on. Uh, same thing for mercury vapor. Uh, it's not much better. Um, high pressure sodium, all of these guys, they, they, uh, they depreciate pretty fast. Fluorescents hold their own pretty good uh, until about 15,000 hours. They'll stay at 90% of their light, but after that, they really start to drop off before they die. Uh, LEDs, they do pretty decent as well. They stay uh, in the 90s to about 20,000 hours, and then they'll stay above 80 for 40,000 hours. So that's really not too bad, but I mean, you need to you need to kind of account for this when you do your lighting design. So you might actually want it to be a little brighter from day one to account for over time it's going to dim. Um, lamps that don't get much recognition, but I think they should, are these inductor lamps, and we'll talk about them later. But you can see they really hold 
uh, good value and they go for a long time. Some of them are actually rated for 100,000 hours. So uh, the red line is a reference lamp, uh, line, but we would like to see in a lamp. You know, we'd like for it to stay at 100% until, you know, it, it's getting close to the end of its life and then it'll drop off. But uh, nothing really acts that way. That's just the ideal case. Uh, light dirt depreciation, which is abbreviated as LDD. So this is a factor that accounts for the accumulation of dirt on the lamp and luminaire surface. The LDD coefficient is affected by the fixture design, the lamp choice, the number of burning hours, and the type of interior environment the fixture is to be in. So to be honest, this is really kind of a judgment call. <clears throat> um, you know, if it's going to be a fairly clean environment. You'll probably put it in the 90s. But you know, if you start to get in like a garage or an industrial application, you know, it's probably not a bad idea to put it at 0.7 or 0.75 because there, you know, there's going to be a lot of dirt in there. So light loss factor is where we put all this together, right? So this is the depreciation of the initial lighting level due to the lamp lumen depreciation coefficient and the luminaire uh, dirt depreciation. So light loss factor is calculated by taking those two and the ballast factor and multiplying them, multiplying them all together. And so this is uh, the overall effect that our lamp will experience over its lifetime and, and how it will depreciate. So when we run visual, we have to set this value. If you do the visual lighting design program, uh, you have to manually set this, which I think a lot of designers fail to do that. You know, so I think it defaults to one, and uh, that's not very realistic. So, uh, you know, if you use the visual Lithonia visual lighting program or other lighting programs to calculate, and we'll talk about those later, you need to remember to account for this light loss factor and manually set that. So here's a, a graph from years ago showing uh, you know, some common light loss factors once you math, multiply those things together. So high pressure sodium lights, you can see they're almost at about 80% light loss factor. Uh, metal halide, uh, anywhere from 0.7 to 0.8. Some of it depends on you know the wattage of the bulb. It varies in relation to that. Same thing with mercury vapor uh, type lights as well. So now that we have, uh, you know, understanding of color and rendering and, and depreciation, you know, we need to also need to think about what is our target? What are we shooting for? How much light do we need in different areas? And so this is defined uh, usually by the Illuminating Engineer Society, um, and they have a handbook that uh, literally is like, seven or eight inches thick. I mean, it is a you know, ginormous book, but inside of it, uh, you can find a lot of information, but uh, probably the most utilized information is their recommended lighting levels. And so here you can see it's given in lux and foot candles. And like I said, they're off by a factor of 10. But you can come and figure out what category you're in um, as far as you know what you're doing, performance of visual task of medium contrast and small size, you'd probably want anywhere from 50 to 100 foot candles. And so this would be something like a classroom, right? And so we usually at least put 50 candles in classrooms. I usually shoot for 75, but uh, you know, it kind of gives you a range there. You know, performance of very prolonged and exacting visual tasks. This is 500 to 1,000 foot candles. So this could be like something like a uh, surgical OR operating room or OR room. You know, you'd want quite a bit of light in there because you're doing some pretty significant work in there. So uh, you can kind of gauge for yourself, um, you know, how much light you might need in there. If this will give, this will help you to guide, you know, what what you think your target should be. Uh, you can even get find some tables where they get even, uh, you know, more granular in what they're looking at like a lobby or reception area, you probably want 10 foot candles. Uh, if you're gonna go general retail, 50 foot candles, supermarkets, 50, a kitchen, 50, food courts, 30, dining, 10, um, general waiting areas, hotel guest rooms. Uh, you know, so uh, what you're doing or close to what you're maybe doing is probably on here somewhere and you, know, you can, you can kind of use this as a guide as well.
So now that we have all understanding of all these factors, um, you know, we can perform some simple calculations. Again, this day and age, we typically do most lighting design with lighting design software, and we'll talk about that a little later. But um, you know, here we can we can do some quick calculations if we want just a, uh, a quick order of magnitude. So if we have the information about a space that we're wanting to uh, to provide light for, and we've picked a fixture, so we have the the ballast factor and the other depreciating factors in the coefficient of utilization. We can also look off the manufacturer's cut sheet and get the lamp lumens divided by the lamp by the luminaire, uh, you know, the area in square feet, and then we pick our foot candle level from the tables we just looked at. We can put them all in this equation, and this will give us a rough estimate of how many luminaires we'll need in a space. So, you know, if you've got a a big meeting room or something and you've picked a fixture you want to use uh, and you have this credit you know at this information then you can plug that in and it'll give you a, a ballpark number of how many luminaires you'll need in a space again when using this qu uh, equation the coefficient of utilization and the depreciation numbers should be available from the manufacturer for the specific fi fixture the ballast factor should be also readily available depending on the light source type uh, again, the square footage you should be able to get from your floor plan, foot candle level. You can either get from the client or the IS design guides, which we just looked at, uh, and the LDD, which is you know what type of environment you can make that judgment call and then uh, plug all those numbers in. It should give you the number of luminaires. We may have some instances where we're going into an existing space and they may be gutting the space and the ceiling and everything, and they want you to either replace with new lightings to get the same maintained lighting level or maybe even improve upon it. So that being the case, you need to kind of figure out what they have already. So this is really the same equation where we've just uh, swapped some things around where you, know, you can plug in the same amount of information instead of getting the, uh, the number of luminaires. You already know that. You can calculate what the foot candle level uh, was designed to in a room. So again, all the terms in this equation are the same as the previous equation, um, but uh, you know you may have to guesstimate some of these uh, coefficients if you can't find the catalog, the exact fixture catalog sheet. But uh, you know you should be able to get pretty close to what the uh, design foot candle level is.